Hey everybody, this is Joe, Joe's Premium Firewood. Today is May 1st, 2024, which means it's my monthly inventory video. So let's get started. Over here, I got a little little pile of boiler wood from uh, big stuff up here that I process not, that can't be turned into premium firewood. Then over here, this is my brother's inventory, the self-proclaimed king of firewood. Um, I would classify it as mid-grade. There is premium wood in there, but I have to sort through it. The longer pieces I put off to the side and save for people, the customers that can uh, take the longer stuff like uh, campgrounds or people with outdoor fire pits. And uh, then the little stuff I've been throwing up there, the low grade stuff, that stuff, anything under 12 inches will, uh, I, I can't, I don't sell. So I've been throwing them, I've been throwing them off to the side. I just loaded a, a, a load yesterday that I delivered. I don't know if you've seen that video. But uh, I, I go through and sort it. I've been putting the long stuff there, and then I'm starting to pile the small stuff. But there is some good stuff in there, so I have to sort it though first. And uh, again, here's his truck running. He's gonna help me with the delivery here in a second. We're pretty much done burning. There's a little pile up there, a little jag of wood that uh, we burn, but uh, we're probably done with fires. We'll see, but. Now you can see the difference between his wood and uh, my wood. Mine is, the vast majority of it is cut, I would say 15 to 17 inches, where his stuff can be, you know, three inches long to three feet long. He, he puts everything in one pile. And uh, this is what I call my bay number one. Anything that goes in here is dry and ready to burn. <sighs> And uh, I don't know how much is in there, probably probably close to three full cords. So I want to get this area filled up before the fall season. This back here is my bay number two. This is what I've got left there. That's all dry, ready to go. This stuff will be ready by winter time. I'm hoping to fill this up as much as possible, but we'll see. But when this is totally full, we could probably get about, I don't know, about 12 full cords in there. This right here, this is, uh, I would call it mostly uh, ready to burn, but some of them bigger pieces of elm, and then there's a few few ash rounds in there. This stuff, I would, uh, I would have no trouble splitting it right into my truck and taking it to a customer. Right here, I have uh, 30 bundles pre-made up for a store that I supply. I sell those to the store at $4 each delivered, and the store's about five miles away. And then this is my bundle grade area where I've been starting to fill it up. These are all the nice straight grain, straight grain, perfect pieces. And uh, it makes making bundles a lot easier. Uh, once I sell all this and I refill this area, then I'll build the stack up all the way to there and fill this area in. So as you can see, that's kind of low, but I don't want to bury this and haven't had the money to start refilling that, that back area yet. And back in here, back in here, I've got, there's some apple right there. That's my apple inventory. I rarely get that. I don't really offer it. If uh, one of my suppliers comes across it, then I'll take it. And this is where I store that. Right here is a, a stack of ready to burn oak. If it's barkless or whatever, this, this is where it, where it goes. And uh, I would say there's about a half cord there and I would want $200 for that stack. And back in here, this is my oak alley. Only oak goes back here. Oak needs to be stored in single rows because of how long it takes to dry. And then as you can see, I've got you know covers for the top. This is my driest stuff right here besides that over there. This stuff will be ready in the fall. This stack right here is 100% white oak. And that looks like to be uh, at least a Joe cord. That's probably, you know, $160 stack right there at least. <sighs> and then uh, I've got one there in the woods. I see it looks like it's leaning pretty good. I might have to go over there and give it a push so it, it, it straightens up and doesn't fall over. This stack's been here since June of 2022. It'll be ready in the fall. It was cut green in the middle of summer and uh, you know, it, when it's cut like that, it's got to, it, it's going to have to take two years to dry. This stuff, Mike and Zach split 
last summer in August, but you can see how, you know, some of them are darker. That means these rounds are laying on the ground for a while. And uh, so it was semi season. This stuff is has only been split for what, what, like eight months. When that's been almost two years, this stuff's definitely drier. And what I mean by semi season, this is what the wood looked like when it was split. I got this stuff from uh, Nate and uh, I topped off this stack of oak right here with that, but that was left over. So uh, if customers order order early, then uh, then this gets uh, split into, into my truck and I could take it right to a customer and it'll be ready by the fall. <laughs> then uh, right here, this is my uh, cherry storage area. I've got a couple restaurants that buy cherry from me. Also individuals like to buy it. Cherry dries fast. So this is where I keep that, the driest cherries right there. And then I'll work my way this way. But in uh, probably three months, this, this stuff right here will be ready. And then over here, I've got summer campfire wood. I was thinking about, you know, filling up these rows, you know, but I, I've just decided the sass, a lot, most of this is sassafras and that can, that doesn't, uh, it dries fast. Um, I, I sent a few, uh, boiler or uh, bundle grade rounds off to the side here that I'll probably move over there later. And, uh, you know, as I go through it, I'll set them off to the side. But as you can see what I've got stacked here, this stuff should be re ready fairly soon. Mike and I, I think started splitting this back in uh, February in the winter time, January, February. And uh, so it's been sitting here all that time, but I've got, I've got more summer camp where wood I'll show you in a second. Like now this, this, uh, this maple that's ready to burn. I got that from Scotty. This uh, uh, also campfire wood. And then the same with this right here. You can see this stuff, this barkless stuff that I got from Scotty. And uh, I could split that right in my truck uh, if I if I needed to today and somebody could take it. So now we're gonna go down, go down our driveway and I'm gonna show you what we have there. So we're gonna have to take a little, a little road trip. Fire up the truck. I've got it all fixed, running good. See the mileage just went over 210,000, and uh, the shifter works great now. So that cost 186, not 185 dollars to fix. And right here, I uh, gathered some uh, limwood at the neighbors before they sold the property, and that's all mostly uh, black locust. And I'm just going to cut that for mom in the winter time. Here's my other pile of uh, summer campfire wood. This is the stuff that's the oldest and it's ready to burn right now. And then you can see the gap right here. That right there all came out of one trip in Mike's truck in his, uh, he's got a eight foot bed, one ton, and he had it stacked side uh, up to the top of the cab with, uh, with the side rails on there. So I would say that's over two face cords right there. It's pushing one full cord. And down here, this is a outdoor boiler wood that I have. You can see all that. And uh, you get the stuff on the top, that cedar that I got from that tree job from Norm. This is the dry stuff right here. And I, I would, if somebody wanted to buy all of that, I would probably say like, come pick it up for 250 bucks. So down here, let me come get it in park. And, uh, We'll take you around and show you what I have here. This area I call my Hickory Haven. It's under the power line. Sometimes I call it the power line storage area. I did have a big pile of uh, of Hickory right there, but a couple weeks ago, my brother helped me split and deliver to a new customer. So that's all I got left out of that. And I, I don't know, I've been thinking about splitting this and stacking it, but, uh, I don't know. They, they might they might order again soon, so I've been kind of waiting, and so I could just split it right into my truck. Here's some more uh, low grade firewood that I give to mom. Re, you know, small rejects. Small rejects go to mom. Big rejects go as boiler wood. And then this right here, this is my driest hickory that I have. That customer 
uh, wanted it to be green. So this stuff's been here for over a year and uh, there's close to close to one one full cord right right here of uh, hickory. I'm not as picky on what the size and shape, the split of hickory as I am about my standard firewood. And right here, uh, this is a, a cord at least of ready to burn black locust. I have a customer that just loves this stuff and uh, he pays me top dollar for it. So I, stay, I save it here for him. Then here's another pile of uh, small rejects for mom the low grade firewood, you know, uh, the people that are cheaper than me, anything goes. So, you, you know, like my brother, it, it all go into, uh, into the shipment, but I can't do that. You know, this is how you get premium wood. I, this is all, this is what I have left of all the, uh, locusts that was cut at the neighbors. There's still, oh, probably two, over two full cords right there. And I've got a couple customers that have been buying it throughout the summer. They're on uh, Social Security, so I don't have the money to buy it all at once. So I've just been doing uh, one delivery a month to them, and I can split right in and go. You know, s some of those with bark still need a little more time, but most of the stuff's been down for years and years and is ready to go right now. Right there, I got some long cut uh, campfire wood. There was a big pile down here I finally cleaned out. And then this right here, this is uh, some oak that I got from a customer. He, when we bartered, he brought me over. I, I think he hooked me up with like four trailer loads or about two full cords of, uh, of this oak. Not the white oak that's on top, but the, this red oak. And uh, there was some boiler wood too. And I, uh, tomorrow I'm going to be taking him a load Mike's going to come help me split this. We're supposed to deliver him a load. I just, I put it in the trailer, drop it off at his house. Then he brings the trailer back. And here's some more uh, scrap for mom. Some of the pieces of boiler wood, they were just too rotten. We just threw into the woods. And this, this is wood that I've had lo more long cut stuff. I got from my brother. Uh, I would say that it would be like campfire wood at best. You know, I would have to sort through all the mushroomy stuff and get rid of get rid of that. It's just it's been here for since 2020, and uh, it was uh, green when it was cut. And if you just not split, it holds a lot of moisture, so that's why it looks like that. And I got more more hickory in this row. There's probably two full cords of uh, hickory right here. This is the next driest stuff after that sells. Right, so once that's gone, then I'll start working my way this way and selling selling this. You know, some of this you can see is on the, on top here is dry, but and then I split this about two or three weeks ago. Looks like a, about a Joe cord, maybe maybe just a face cord right there. And uh, I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to split this stuff and put it in there or not, or save it and split it and take to my one. Uh, take to my customer that just bought from me so all right folks i'm gonna go ahead go uh start uploading this video uh, i want to thank everybody for the thumbs up thanks everybody who uh watched it to the end and we'll catch you guys on the next one